Hello! I have decided to make a series of videos where I try to explain a little bit about having a clan and coordinating operations and structuring clans and how a little bit of the high command works as much as I can talk about there. It's a bit of the free flow thing. I don't have a script. I don't have anything. I have some things prepared. I, I have my trusty folder with, with clan icons and stuff that I use for planning operations. I have paint. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully I don't have to use that because I, uh, I prepared something. Yeah, I prepared this awesome presentation. They, they, everything is under control and looking really good and stuff. So let's see how it goes, and I hope that you guys learned something from this. Uh, yeah, that is the goal anyway. But uh, to start off, this is how the 13th looks in terms of officer ranks. Uh, there is the Field Marshal, which is me. It's a fantastic title. Yeah, it's very flamboyant. And then I have two second in commands, which are the generals. And then I have uh, a top brass section, and then I have just standard officer roles, and then I have a couple NCR roles. And you can see a real nice uh, grid here that I lay over, so you can see what roles are what. The artistic wonder and propaganda officer is all art department and propaganda, like promotional material. Then we have the secretary general branch, which is administrative stuff, uh, check, like preparing meetings, preparing documents for meetings, gathering stuff, and sometimes we make documents about rules and some past like history. We have some history about the clan that's all f in folders and packed and neat. Take care of all of that. Then we have the quartermasters, and then we have the combat section, which is the red section, the lieutenant colonel, captain lieutenant, and then we have the lieutenant colonel that is an administrative role. That's because we have divisions in the 13th, and basically these divisions are built with a... It's basically mini clans inside the clan, right? And the leader of a division is the major. And you can see he's on the same level as the captain, but he pretty much in rank fits in between the captain and the lieutenant colonel. It's a bit of an interesting system. And then the, the captains go on the same level and the lieutenants. But it, there's an interesting caveat to the division specific things. So basically, if it's, if say, there's an issue with the division, right, and you have a lieutenant from the division and a lieutenant from the corps, who's both involved, the, the person who's from the division outranks the lieutenant who's not from the division when it's a division matter, and it's the other way around when it's not. So if we have someone coming to us like, hey, one of your guys did this dumb thing, and the two lieutenants are on, the one who has responsibility for it is the one that it's relevant for. Which kind of, like, that makes sense. And the leaders of these are, as I said, the majors. You can see on the color schemes here that the majors, generals, and field marshals are a weird wonky color. And that's a combination of purple, red, and blue. Because we do both combat, logistics, and administrative jobs. So we have all three colors, while the other branches have the color that corresponds. In a moment, I'll start talking about just combat-oriented things and like op organization, and everything just switches to blue because the roles that we have for just enlisted people are blue, and you know, we're the one... It looked good, what do you want me to say? But uh, these are the actual colors that I use for my ranks in my uh, Discord channel as well. So you can sort people and you can just at a glance see that this person is in charge of this. Which is super nice, gotta be honest. But yeah, uh, the currently occupied seats. The field marshal is obviously just me. I only have one general. I only have a combat... No, I don't even have a combat lieutenant colonel anymore. And I don't have a division lieutenant colonel. I have a quartermaster, a secretary general, and an artistic wonder. So, yeah, I have three out of five votes when we do large decisions because 
it's basically set up like I can I can decide whatever I want at any point in time and do whatever the heck I want. But that's not nice. And I generally don't do this. Like the general can also do this if it's on matters that has to be reacted to immediately. So but most of the time if we have a big decision to make, we take it up with the top brass and then every top brass has a vote except the quartermasters because we have three quartermasters and they are all top brass but they have one unanimous vote which also means if two of the quartermasters don't show up the last quartermaster has the full vote if two of them show up they have to agree on what to decide in that that's it's a bit funky and at first I thought I don't want it like this it doesn't make sense like it's gonna be so many problems with them disagreeing but it does actually work and I've had no issues with it yet, so that's super cool. Uh, we had a lieutenant colonel, but he got promoted to general when my old general retired. <laughs> so that means i lacking a combat leader. But basically, the top brass is the highest authority in their specific branch. So that that gives me less work to do. And the lieutenant colonel of the divisions is basically just he keeps track of all the divisions so in theory like currently we have the majors of the division show up but in theory if we get a lieutenant colonel for the divisions the division majors wouldn't have to show up unless they have division specific issues for meetings i mean it's always nice to have people at the meeting but technically they wouldn't have to and then we just have lower and lower ranks with less and less responsibilities. Uh, the most important is like the the role of the lieutenant colonel is to do operations that are... actually let's take it from the bottom because it's a lot more simple. A lieutenant is just a supporting officer. They're never supposed to host operations. They can but they're not... it's not required that they do. A captain is required to host operations, plan operations and execute them. But that is only within the clan. So basically, 13th operations only. The lieutenant colonel, however, is the combat trees where they do cross-clan operations. One clan, two clans with us, coordinating like that. Generals and field marshals, we just do everything. We keep check that nothing's going bad. But we also do... We do quartermaster work and we do we we fill in for when the people are not there and then we do like higher up things if if some of the clan leaders want to meet have a meeting or something we're the one who goes so that's kind of it we do also have a tree for or we had a tree for uh diplomatic roles but it's it's just it's Papa Trotsky and I who do that all the time, so I, I didn't include it here because it wasn't super relevant. The Secretary General can appoint secretaries, intelligentsia, archivists and transcribers, which is basically just less work for him, and we give this to non-officers, so sometimes we have a transcriber at the meeting, and they write down what we say instead of having the General Secretary do it if he's not there, stuff like that. It is super nice. But yeah, I think it's uh, time to move on to what we do in operations. Uh, let's start with infantry. And this is just, on the left here, it's just basic infantry setups. It's not like, it's just an infantry squad. So the op lead would lead the two infantry squads, basically, often being part of one of them and telling the squad lead of the other what to do, or having his own squad or a bodyguard and then being independent of the two squads pretty much looks like this. Uh, then, just an example of it that I have run is this over here, having a field machine gun, two infantry squads and an anti-tank infantry. And it's basically just the operation leader gives them goals. Like a really typical one when you have a field gun is the field gun in the middle and you assign an infantry squad on each side and then you can keep the anti-tank squad as like a fluent squad that goes that you kind of move around to counter any like motorized or mechanized infantry or a counter to your field gun so they're very fluent and most of the time the one that you move around the most basically making sure that you don't get flanked by 
a vehicle that are too strong to be handled by the infantry. The infantry can have integrated anti-tank, but it's super nice to have someone that you can just say, your job is, go here, kill that, or hold it off. So that's the basic idea of this. But you see a lot of different iterations. Sometimes you have medical squads, because it's just better. Or you, you just put all your infantry into one single... Like, <laughs> just put in put an officer, and you just take, like, ten... 15 guys, all of them on HE rushes, or like RPG rush, then you make two people the medical squad, run with the op leader and then you just mamon charge, and it's super fun and it's super effective. But basically, it's just an example, but usually you have a squad lead in each, and we have some like standard loadouts for that. The others can be pretty much whatever they want. Some people like to have SMGs, some people like to have rifles. I'm not going to dictate that most of the time unless it's a very specific operation. So yeah, that's uh, that's infantry for you. If you want to take this a step further, sometimes you do operations where you have split goals or split objectives. And then you have your op lead not only having to keep track of his already established squads, but you have a secondary op lead. Say you're attacking a relic base, then you have a secondary op lead take a squad behind that to try and disrupt their logistics or any reinforcements coming in, or just basically making an encirclement. And then you have to communicate not just with the squad you already have, but to the secondary op lead about how that is going and what they need, giving you a larger strain on the leader. Next up, we have tanks. Yeah, uh, this is an example on a three tank squad, which is the op leader, usually in a tank. He can be on foot if he wants to, but it's really common that the tank leader goes in a tank of his own. Then he has the two tanks that he's leading. Often these will be lieutenants or like, non-commissioned officer commanders. And in some cases, you have a fourth gunner, so you just or a fourth seat being a secondary gunner, like on the chieftain or the silver hand, <laughs> or the old BTs where you had like five guys. It's fucking, I wish. Uh, and a typical like a split that could happen for an op would be this. So you have your tank, uh, your operation leader, and four tanks. I have been in this exact situation before, and I ended up doing this with the tanks, so I, I split them up and took the op lead and another tank, and then I made a secondary op lead, or a yeah, secondary commander take command of the line tanks, basically. And then you could use those two tanks to flank and stuff like that. But then again, the leader of this second squad has to communicate with you, making more strain, but it can be super, super effective if you use it correctly. Especially now that we have the new cruiser tanks, it would be super, super, uh... I forget the word. It would make sense to, from the beginning, make those two uh, single tanks to cruiser tanks and use them for flanking. And then you could co coordinate the flank with the main line to come in and sweep and provide cover after you've attacked with your flanking force. So to do an op, you need to do some logistics, obviously. And uh, this is usually how I do it. It's, it's, I have found this to be the most efficient way to do logistics. You basically just designate two people. Here's a list for that one thing you need. So this would be a naval operation, right? You give them a list. You need to make barge X or 1. You have to have A of like this crate, this amount of this crate, this amount of this crate, in the barge, then you need a truck on the barge, you need this and this. You just give them the different lists, then you make a quick note, this person's making this barge. So you have a list on a document or whatever, and you just check off this has been made, this has been made, this has been made, and it's ready here, here, here. And then you just switch them over to the next thing. Like, If you need six things, when the first team's done, you give them the next thing you need done, and that's about it. I, honestly, I have had things that took multiple hours, and then, you know, I fucked it up because it's not supposed to take multiple hours, and then I developed the system and things that before it took two, two and a half, three hours maybe, 
cut it down to an hour, an hour and a half. Because it's a lot easier for the op lead queue, like the coordinator, to go around and check that this has been made, this has been made, this has been made. It's super easy to be like, yeah, I think this is, or get, like, the worst thing that can happen when you prepare for an op is that you bring the wrong things in the wrong like vehicles or the wrong barges and you believe it's the right stuff and you're like go to this barge it has the thing and then it doesn't it can ruin like that can be the one thing that ruins the whole operation so whatever i can do to not go into this fallacy is super good and this is as far as i can tell the easiest way to not do that because you have two people who are responsible and they can check on each other and they can check on the object and then you don't personally have to go check all the time super nice as well because sometimes if you have a large harbor or you have a large staging area you can have like five six teams running at the same time prepping stuff you just can't keep check of it but now for actual operations here is just a basic setup of what an operation could look like uh, run by the 13th you have the tank the op leader often in a tank if we have tanks and we're employing tanks just if the leader dies, that's not good. So employing that in a tank and then have the secondary op lead run the infantry, it's just it's just super, super useful. I, I mean, it's straight up best system. I die way less when I'm in a tank than when I run infantry because I'm like, I can do this dumb thing and then I do the dumb thing and then I'm murdered. Or I, I just need to get a closer look with my binos and then I walk straight into a rifle garrison and it's just that's no good. Most of the time what happens is just I die, the people don't know what they're supposed to be doing because they didn't read the operation document or something changed or they're not entirely sure who the next in command is or the next in command doesn't immediately take charge and then people are like, are you? Should you listen to this guy? And It's just, it's just better if you don't die, mate. But of course not all operations are run internally and the real issues start happening when we work with other clans uh, because coordinating is super hard you have to keep in mind in this setup that I have right here which is super common like it's what I do 90% of the time because no one has enough officers and it's you know you're just pretty much forced into this, especially like if I'm in a tank, why not just lead the tanks because then they do exactly what I want, uh, that kind of thing. So in this setup, we have the clan lead commander who is also commanding his own squad of tanks, which is like three tanks. It's called something. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. God damn it. I'll probably remember later and correct myself. But yeah, leading the three tanks. So you're not just coordinating your own tank, you're also coordinating the two other tanks, in addition to coordinating the second op lead. And the second op lead is then co coordinating the three in infantry groups, right? In addition to keeping track of what all of your clan is doing, you also have to... Like, in this setup, none of the clan leaders are above the other. They have to agree on everything. Now here the other clan is project... like... Um, my fucking god, is exemplified by being the 11th, because I like them, and uh, they have a nice fucking logo, so I put them in. Uh, so here it would be Archeon and I, most of the time, uh, communicating about what are we gonna do, right? And most of the time, that's going to be over text on Discord, being like, hey mate, are you here? Where are you? And reading and writing those text messages while coordinating your own tank, commanding it, coordinating the two other tanks, and relying information, relaying information to the second op lead. That gets super messy, because you're not the only one who has to do that. The other clan leader has to also relay information, also coordinate his tanks, also coordinate his second uh, op lead. In this example, uh, Archeon's clan, the 11th, is set up to have the tanks independent and the infantry independent, so Archeon would have an easier time here, but it's still not easy having to relay information to those two. While also, in this case, he either has his own squad of like bodyguards with him, 
and they're either motorized or on foot, so he still has to move his character physically in-game to keep up and not get behind on information. It's, when, you, when you command, you have so many DMs, so many whispers, and you still have to keep up with everything that's going on around you, so you don't get behind in terms of what the other commanders know, and behind in terms of what the enemy commander knows and what they're doing. So it gets super messy, super quick. The next setup we have is obviously with one clan commander being above the other. So, and, and often I debate whether this is worse or better, and I think it really does depend on what commander you're working with. Working with Archeon, this works super well. I mean, both work super well, because Archeon and I know each other really well and we've worked together a lot. But sometimes you have clan commanders who just really can't work with this. They can't... <laughs> they're a bit stuck up in their ego, and they can't take orders from someone else. Or it's the other way around. They want to give orders all the time, or if you're on the level where you're both equal, they just want orders, and you don't want to give it. So sometimes it's super hard, like, how that is set up. And a lot of the time, uh, it also ends up just being... So, I'm going here and doing this, and the other commander being like, I'm going here and doing this. Basically having two different operations that are supposed to work together, just going on at the same time, instead of properly working together and being like, hey, I need support here. Hey, could you do this? Hey, I can come over and help you. It just becomes, I'm on my own, you're on your own, let's meet up at this place. And it just doesn't, like, that shit doesn't work. In my opinion, for some it works, I don't understand how it works. I don't understand how they get it to work. That's not working together, in my opinion. That is... That is just two different ops with the same goal, really. But this can work super well, because one person... Especially if you detach, if the, the operation leader then detaches himself from being the clan leader, it gives him a lot more flexibility and a lot information is a lot more accessible to him regarding the battlefield, so that is super nice. But if you still have to command your clan and give orders to the other clan, it becomes a lot to handle. Here we have <laughs> the extreme of this. And uh, yeah, I have been here. This is, this is fun. It's very fun. Um, this example is not the best because the one thing the one time I did this I did detach myself from my own tanks and just were in my own tank but having four or five different people that you have to communicate to while doing your own tank and also the random people around you sometimes you need to pick those specifically and not communicate it to the other leaders you have to be you basically have four or five ongoing conversations with different people at the same time. And uh, it's very easy to get information messed up or become confused as to what is going on when and can I rely on these people to actually do the thing that I'm asking them to? Or will they just go off and do their own thing? Because sometimes you give orders to a person who's like, but you're not my clan leader, so why should I do what you say? And that's problems you'll always encounter. But uh, the weirdest thing, and I think the one thing that to take away from this is, there's usually not an operation. Like, in operations, it's super easy to have an operation leader, right? But a lot of the time, especially when planning these things, we're all... There's no, like... There's no war leader. It's all, like on a council basis, where everyone has the same, to, like, allowance to say, like, everyone's word is worth the same, or, like, you always have some where they're more respected and stuff like that, but you don't have a person who's like, my word goes, or we're doing this, or, I mean, heck, sometimes we don't even have anyone to give the conversation a direction, and we just spin off and talk about something completely different that's not relevant in any amount. So that's wonderfully lovely, uh, but you're also a tremendous force if you get this to work. But I think, I think that's, uh, probably forgot to say a lot of the stuff that I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, 
But uh, thank you for listening to, to part one of my explanations. If you have any questions or said anything in a weird way that you didn't understand, just throw a comment. I'll, I'll answer it if it's something sensible. Uh, yeah, and uh, to give a quick shout out to the people that I have representing other clans. We have Krieg to the left, we have Blue Rose BR in the middle, then we have my own clan, the 13th, and then we have 11 year CFL. And I am so grateful to all of these clans, because it's all clans that I've actually worked with. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're good people. I like them. If you ever play Foxhole, and you don't want to join the 13th for whatever reason, or you speak French, join the French, or these clans, BR does a lot of tanks, super nice people. Krieg, I've only seen them in tanks, but I'm pretty sure Dami said they, they do a bunch of other cool stuff. Regardless, all the leaders are super charismatic and super super nice people, so it's going to be a blast if you join any of them. I think that is all for me for today, and I wish you a very good day, guys.